Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the weekly Dare Dallas webinar. Uh, we hope you're all keeping well. Um, first of all, many thanks for joining us again. Um, it's lovely to see and hear everyone and, uh, and all the feedback we've been getting from our viewers. So, so thank you ever so much for that. Uh, just as a quick tip off, uh, next week I'm actually going to be joined by Rupert Mars, uh, well known for being the owner of the, the Mars Gallery and obviously a long running art expert on the, the Antiques Roadshow as well. Uh, today, however, uh, joined by our very own art celebrity, uh, Jonathan Horwich, uh, to talk about one of, I suppose, the, the most unique subjects I think we've, we've covered, I think, in these weeks, which is George Condo. So, hello, Jonathan. Thank you again for joining us so much uh, today. Um, now, I'm sure that our regular viewers will know you and, and know what you do, but just could you maybe kind of give the people who don't know who you are just a, a quick tip off and uh, let them know who you are? <laughs> yeah, it's good. Well, hello, everybody, and, and welcome back. It's nice to see you all again. Uh, I, I think I'm probably a polymath in terms of art in so far as I probably cover three or four hundred years of art knowledge. But my, if I were on Mastermind, my, my general knowledge would be on pictures as a whole, but my specific or specialist subject would be 20th century British art. So for me to talk about George Kondo probably is is it's the tiniest bit out of my comfort zone but not really because i'm also in recent years i've become um a contemporary specialist as well so i'm having real fun uh, being involved in in if you like much newer things and george kondo as a person as an artist is fascinating no so Let's move to George Kondo. So I think off the top of my head, I think we've had many conversations during lockdown and uh, covered quite a few things, but I think it's one of the only living artists that we've actually covered specifically. So there must be something significant about him in order that you want to cover him. So I'm, I'm quite pleased that we've actually brought him up here. Could you give us a bit of a background in, into Kondo and kind of where he started and obviously, you know, kind of his collaborations early on? Yeah, he's, he's a little bit younger than me, and so in a sense is well established and, and comfortable in his career. But he starts inevitably at, at art school, but perhaps uh, he's American, born in 1957, and is, through a series of events, ends up being in contact with or, or passing through people who, even if you don't study art, absolutely resonate and mean something. Um, particularly Andy Warhol. Um, he worked for Andy Warhol in the Silver Studios for just about a year. I don't think he could claim to have known him, but certainly met him during his time there. So if you're adding to George Condo's role of honour, it's the fact that he worked with and then met Andy Warhol. He also knew Basquiat, the um, American painter, sadly died very young but certainly someone who's in the front rank of prices at the moment oh certainly uh, currently it that, seems to be a very popular yeah thing, isn't it it, mm. it seems yeah both condo and basquiat uh, throughout lockdown their work has continued to almost gain in strength weirdly mm. so it, it's good news all around for, from that point of view uh, but george condo is also a musician he had a band and through the band met Basquiat. Basquiat came to a, a, a concert. He himself, Basquiat that is, was in the band and they met up and just became friends through music more so than art. And Basquiat invited George Condo up to New York. He was living in upstate New York and Connecticut and, and sort of out of town really. Uh, and he went to New York and the rest sort of becomes history. It's funny because I think obviously he started he started with this kind of the with this musical kind of connection and obviously we'll, we'll we'll come on to it a little bit later but but clearly continued his his love for music and his kind of his inspiration from music. So let's talk about yeah. kind of early on in his career before kind of the more recent kind of revelations with what he's done. Um, was he prolific? Did he work? You know. In, in, in many, many different kind of factors? Or, or was he kind of more kind of seated with one kind of movement, would you say, in, in the way that kind of Basquiat and, and Warhol were? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. I think you could 
art specialists such as myself divide ourselves into flat and bumpy. So flat art being pictures, prints and works on paper and the rest being furniture and everything else, sort of including sculpture. And I would say that Kondo is essentially a flat artist. And for those of you out there thinking, um, you know, what, how does this affect me? Luckily for, for us all, Kondo produces work, yes, essentially flat, but in all the mediums which make him a bit more accessible. So if you've got six or eight hundred pounds, you can, you can buy a silk screen or a print, so you're not ruled out by the, the vast prices paid for his work. And what we're looking at now, you know, for those of you who are even familiar with art without necessarily studying it, can see that this is very resonant of George Condo's other great hero, and that's Pablo Picasso. The difference being that Picasso chooses real people who he has met or knows, and recreates them, albeit with eyes on the size of, side of their head or the back of their head, or perhaps multiple eyes. Kondo uses the same principle, but all of these people and all of these images are imagined in his head. Uh, he often says that if you imagine that you're looking at four people on a bus, uh, as the bus is passing by on the top deck, he basically is amalgamating each of their expressions into one person. So you get multiple eyes and multiple expressions all squidged onto, onto these heads, which is really what we're, we're seeing here. So he's almost taking influence, but then completely twisting it on its head, forgive the pun, and yeah. basically re recreating something completely new and different. Yeah, he, basically throughout his, his career, up to and including relatively recent times, every image is imagined and they're, they're either stories or they are figures as we see here and the exception is at, at a, a point not that long ago four or five years he takes it upon himself to paint her majesty the queen who looks <laughs> i don't quite know what, what how you would describe it but she's certainly got a crown and she's got ermine robes but she's got cheeks like a hamster and, and a rather squidgy face so he's, he's reimagined her face um, and so it doesn't really look like her at all, but it's how he imagines she might look in a sort of cartoonish way. In a reinterpreted kind of manner. Um, yes. Yeah. In, in, terms yeah. of, in terms of Kondo's career, um, obviously we, we, we had the point where he was a musician and then kind of probably finding his feet. But was he instantly successful? Did it take him a while to become popular within the realms of the art world? Yeah, it took him a while. He, 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 after his, his sojourn in, in New York, he goes off to, to Europe, spending almost 10 years in Paris. So he's adding to the American experience by a really quite long stay in, in Paris. You, you might imagine that a young painter might spend two or three years, but it's a good solid 10 years there. So you have in his work, something which you can see in this image here, a level of sophistication and depth of, of knowledge and influences that I think you'd otherwise wouldn't see if you'd not spent so much time absorbing everything that Paris and, and Brussels elsewhere has to offer. So I think he did himself a great many favours, but yes, that in itself sort of de delays gratification, if you like, that it means you're, you're out of, of your natural environment and it's undeniably true that he's most popular in America, but um, you know, before coming on today, I just checked the, all the auctions coming up, and wherever you look, be it Paris, Hong Kong, London, um, France, where, where you name it, there's something by Condo coming up. So, simply by virtue of his popularity, he's he's now really a worldwide. Was he, was phenomenon. he relatively prolific then, or is it because, as you previously said, that? there are things that are available, be it a silk screen print or, or something like that. So is it because there's lots of different yeah. mediums of that or is it because he did just paint a lot? Yeah, he's not prolific. That's one thing he isn't. And uh, I think one of the, the challenges faced by the, the, the new collector is to find work and probably the starting point is, is multiples and prints. Um, uh, but if you're a, a mega collector, if you're, you're you know, spending 
tens of millions on works of art, then the frustration for you is there isn't much work around. And to add to that, his way of working is incredibly slow. Um, so that the, the, you know, the, the, the art legend is that the waiting lists for Kondo are sort of a bit of a joke, really, that you, you might as well not bother. Yes, you could put your name down, <laughs> but by, by the time you're gonna get anything new out of George, you'll, either he'll be dead or you will. <laughs> it's funny you should say that when, when it comes to kind of uh, putting your name on a waiting list because from what I can gather and reading a bit about him before our, 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 our meeting today is he is a man that has a multitude of friends and, and in some of the most uh, unexpected places really isn't it and that the people that he has yeah. influenced and the people that have you know kind of influenced him in what he's done yeah Yes, he's, he's as, as many people would have spotted in, the, in my article, that he's, he has made a friendship with Kanye West, not so much uh, Kim, his wife. Is, am I right in saying his wife is Kim Kardashian? Or, 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 yes, yes, I mean, uh, yeah. I, I believe so, Jonathan. My, my, my knowledge on these things is, 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 is somewhat limited. Um, but uh, yeah. I think he, he, he did a, um, a Birkin bag for Kim Kardashian, didn't he? Well, this is the thing, isn't it? That your friend is, is, is George Kondo and, and George's friend is Kanye West and they're talking about what, what could you get that's really very special for, for your wife. And I'm not, it's impossible to know how it happened, but uh, sure enough, George did a Birkin bag, a plain cream Birkin bag, which he painted with a design for Kim's birthday but it made an appearance and then disappeared because it's sort of a bit horrible, really. There's, it, it's nude figures on a black background on a really quite elegant bag. And although you might sort of walk around with it, it just is a bit weird. Um, <laughs> so it, it was, you know, I'm sure uh, Kim's got other bags she could use. That's, let's put it like that. And I don't, you don't see this one very much, but this image here. I, I, I imagine she's got hundreds and hundreds of bags. It's <laughs> Yeah, she put that one in the cupboard and forget about it. But, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't suppose that, that, that money changed hands. It's just something. And you imagine yourself in a situation where, you know, you've asked uh, the artist to do something. You can't really dictate what it is. So it is what it is. And you can't say, well, actually, can I have another one? It, it's, it's one of those, not an awkward situation. And indeed, for neither Kanye West nor his wife, is it a problem? But imagine that you'd commissioned it it might be a problem mightn't it because you're just not really <laughs> gonna like it do, do you know how the, it, the relationship it, between kanye and uh, george kondo came about was was he a fan had he had he purchased artwork of his beforehand before he kind of commissioned into no, the no it's through music i think that's the thing that that hmm. um kondo is is still in still plays um in, in a or appears in a band rather like you know Many people with, were multi-talented. Woody Allen, for instance, still plays the clarinet in the in the Uptown Hotel every Sunday, I think it is, or maybe Thursday night. I've forgotten. And so, yes, it's through music. So it's it's a mutual interest in a subject which is of interest to both of them, uh, which is quite nice, really. If it was only art, or if 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 all George Condo was to Kenny was someone whose art he wanted to buy, then it wouldn't be much of a relationship. So I think it's quite... No, I get that. It, it's quite, a, it's obviously yeah. quite a personal thing because yeah. um, the, the, the piece, I mean, it would be very difficult, I would imagine, for even somebody such as, as, as Kanye himself to go up to George Conner and say, right, I've got this idea for an album cover. This is what I want you to do. Yeah. I imagine it was probably a case, whether I'm right or wrong, I don't know, but uh, he came up with it and uh, Kanye probably said, that's the album cover. Um, and, I, and I imagine yeah. it was probably that he, kind of situation. Yeah, he did. Certainly, that's right. You, the, 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 that George Kondo did album covers for Kanye. And I, when you look at them, they're, they're sort of not at, at all what you'd expect. But they are what you'd expect from Kondo. They're not necessarily what you'd associate with Kanye West as an individual, as a, as a, a rapper or artist. But it's not a problem, it just adds another dimension. I'm just thinking about the relationship. I imagine if you're Kanye West, people are at you all the time for a piece of you, if you know what I mean. They, you know, yeah. it's, it's either a graph or 
or something. And the same for an artist who is uh, very successful and well known. Probably the relationship is quite enjoyable for both because neither actually needs each other, if you like. Uh, but they both enjoy music. They both have their different talents. So it's probably mutually quite suitable. Hmm. Oh, certainly. And I imagine for somebody like Kanye, as you quite rightly pointed out, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't need to associate with people. And I imagine he could probably afford any piece of artwork in the world or commission any artist in the world to do things for him. Yeah. So he has the ability to actually choose um, and pick and choose the uh, the pieces for his for his his album work so it's it's, it's a phenomenal yeah it's, 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 a, it's a it's a nice thing to see actually isn't it because i think he's also yeah. done quite a lot of other things for other musicians as well and whether or not these were done gratis or whatever and, and possibly i don't know that the the profile of the the record that was being released may have been raised somewhat by having a george condo artwork on the front of it i don't know but uh, some some of the other people apart from kanye obviously salman rushdie um was, was quite a famous kind of advocate of his work as well yeah yeah i it, i i don't know certainly that that's true and maybe in a way if you're, you're picking off names in a world where george condo doesn't produce much art then in a way to drive interest towards him as a topic then probably you try to to match up famous people to mm. those, with those people who own his work, and that's perfectly true. I think what's, to me, what's interesting about George is he's, he's able to have friendships that's quite singular. He doesn't need, he doesn't need them. Uh, and uh, Rushdie, I imagine, equally doesn't need George. It's sort of mutually suitable relationships. I think it adds to the, the overall flavor. Um, but I think his work, you know, for, for all of us who look at art, there is, you know, I, I, you and I have talked about Lowry in the past and we've talked about what I would call signature pictures and, and what you've just put up on the screen now is, is absolutely 100% yeah. dead eye, bullseye signature picture <laughs> by Condo. There is absolutely nobody else who can or would do this and i think that's where he wins out that if you're a, a collector i mean probably kanye west will have pictures by condo in his home or at least in a home and the important thing for him and for other collectors is for for the work to be very distinctive so you see in the marketplace the strongest and highest prices are for pictures which are immediately recognized as what we art specialists call signature pictures. In other words, if we were looking at a Picasso, then it would be, you know, a, a, a figure, uh, a lover or whatever, um, in, in from the 60s or 70s, and it would be a, a typical thing. And that's that's what people are looking for. So this is condo. It's it's nothing more or less than that. And you couldn't confuse this with anything else, which is I think why there is so much interest in his work he may make hopefully it makes sense to people listening that if you're going to, to own something by condo the thing you want is the thing that looks like it's meant to look like if you know what i mean um it's, yeah, i mean as you want, say it's it's definitive of his style definitive yeah. of what you what you want to purchase really isn't it i think it's yeah. one of those yeah. things and you were think, this to come to market it would be you know the piece that you know would, would chop off the collection certainly of condo pieces yeah it, it's as they say in america it's a slam dunk you, you look at it <laughs> and, and think and it's condo and you know you look at a group of figures uh coming out of a, a mill or a football match by larry and, and that's it even if you live your life under a stone you know that it's it's a uh, it's a typical a very typical Lowry. So that the same applies to Condo. And you look through the the record prices. Interestingly enough, for Condo, and it's not true of artists. People say, you know, what's the artist's best period or whatever. Well, in the case of Condo, quite unusually, although there's a depth of work going back to the 60s, uh, the 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 most popular work is his most recent, and that's not always the case. Really, with that's that, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. So, so is this because I mean, 
is, is there a change of style or is it just literally just subject matters that have that have started to change over the last 10 20 years yeah i think it's what you just said that if you take the last 10 15 years for for whatever reason or however it is his his style has matured uh into into what is immediately recognizable and, and and there's like a sort of back catalogue, if you like, of of earlier work, which is less valuable, or at least less interesting. And through the the scarcity of the work, it's it's developed into a very strong market uh, for a, an artist's most recent work, which is sort of slightly topsy turvy. You know, you go yeah. back, you look at the Picasso market in the pre pre Second World War era, blue period. Uh, in, in the 50s blue period and rose period picasso was everything and then as time went on the later newer work began to overtake it and i i think with condo he's come straight in with his latest work that that's been the most successful and bit by bit it's just tracking back in time as, as earlier work begins to appear but you probably wouldn't buy an earlier work until you'd bought a later one if you see what i mean so it's the impact of the the later pieces that seem to be making the yeah. the, the, the buzz, yeah. if you see what I mean. In terms of exactly. then, Jonathan, when we're talking about later works currently and later works making good amounts of money in the current market, if we go back 20 years, was it the same situation then? So his most recent works 20 years ago were making good money, or is it only in the last 20, 30 years that he's really come to the forefront of the market? Well, actually, it's in the last five years. It's, it's even more recent than that, mm. that, that, that although he's been selling, it's it, because of the, 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 the length of time he takes to produce a work, because of the then scarcity of work, somehow it's really, he's just sort of ch chugged along, basically. It isn't because of his relationship with Kanye West, I'm pretty sure of that, it, it, although it's there, just a bunch of people, and it doesn't take many, maybe half a dozen, Maybe they've just woken up to the fact that he is a great painter, a very distinctive, talented, capable, and, you know, for want of a better word, a proper painter. You know, I don't think we should forget that, that what we're looking at is, is a, a very sophisticated and it looks simple. You know, all these images we've been looking at just now look simple, but they're not. They're very complex. They're very painterly and a great deal of work craftsmanship if you like goes into producing them and i think just a bunch of people albeit with deep pockets all woke up to this fact within the last well last five years i mean he, he broke in, in 90 in 2017 2018 you know very recent times every time anything major came up which it did right throughout the season of 2018 then each picture broke the world record. So you, you, you start off with a new world, world record price, the next piece by Condo comes up, it breaks that one and that one and that one. So seven pictures come up in that year and every single one of them breaks the previous record. Any, uh, any reference to, to subject matter? To, <coughs> is, is there anything you know, to do with that? Yeah, there, or is it literally everything coming out? Everything coming up basically, but if you think about it as a numbers game, that if, if, if one picture breaks the world record, there's enough time between that auction, let's say it's in New York and the London sales, to, to gather another one for the next sales season. Uh, and maybe you got between six and 10, maybe six and 12 potential buyers and investors. There'll be people out there who want to buy not because they like his work, but because they feel he's on a roll, which is certainly true. Yeah. So you multiply that by the numbers that are available, the competition. So the, the, the final price is outstripping the pre-sale estimate sometimes by five or ten times. It's like a not quite a feeding frenzy, but it is a sort of sudden realization that, that here is a great painter who's been somewhat overlooked and we want a piece of that. Well, it, it's, a, it's a fascinating kind of thing. And one of my questions was going to be, where do we think the future 
in terms of his work is going to go in terms of prices and really i mean would you say in the, on the current trajectory at least um it's the only way is up yeah i think so i mean it, 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 you probably will be i before coming on i, I checked this the sales in New York, generally speaking, what, what's missing inevitably is major paintings because that sort of flurry of activity in 2018, uh, 2019 flushed out whatever there was that was available. You know, there's no denying that there is a great deal of pleasure in owning work by Condo, that we right. mustn't forget that then people, despite whatever um, anybody is telling them about the value, don't want to sell them because they love owning them. So you yeah. have that fact well, and yes, inevitably at some point there's going to be a, you know, someone will say, well, it's worth X, and then you finally give in. I'm sure that there's lots of poor people who've been pestered to, to sell their condos, who, condos who actually don't want to sell them. But I think, yeah, it, the only way is up. I think the good thing is that there is with the um, works on paper, and editions. Uh, there's a sale, an auction today, in which there's a work on paper by Condo, not looking like anything we've seen today, so not typical. It's 25 to 35,000. Uh, it's acrylic okay. on paper, quite a decent size. I imagine that will do well. So, what's happening now is things are selling. The estimates inevitably have gone up. So, the difference between the pre sale estimate and the final price is, is that narrowed. Estimate still sounds, that estimate still sounds fairly low though, I think, doesn't it? Yes, yes, I think it's, it's probably gonna make a factor of probably four times that. Mm. So yeah, it, it's still, still rolling because there are still people discovering Condo. What's not to like? There are some ugly-ish things out there, and, um, but I don't see that it's George Condo's job to only produce attractive things. He's trying to, mm -hmm. to paint art and, and make interesting things. Yes, it's... Uh... So I, you know, his, his, his sort of provenance, if you like, with his... Uh, I think there's a lot of weight from his early time spent working for Warhol and the, the friendship with Basquiat. That, I don't think that should be underestimated as an influence on on people. Oh, I think you can, can see it. See you can see that. I think you can yeah. see it more with Basquiat than, than you can with Warhol, to my mind at least. But yeah. obviously, you probably might have a slightly yeah. different opinion. But no, 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 no. I agree with you. I think there's a lot of Basquiat in there. There's a lot of Picasso in there, uh, and and you have a sense of of a real craftsman painter. You know, mm. he's just not slapping this stuff on and 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 doing it willy nilly. There, there is a sense. You know, okay, maybe you could argue, you know, what are you looking for in a picture? Maybe it isn't value for money, but the fact that he is, you know, a proper painter sh shouldn't be, uh, sh should be recognised, I think. Well, this has been absolutely fascinating, as always, Jonathan. Um, my my <laughs> final question, which is, which is the normal question, it's, it's an interesting one because I would normally say, what would you have? But would you have one? I think this is, this is, this is something to be asked because obviously the, it's, it's a very, you know, it's, it's one of those subjects with art, especially with Condo. I mean, personally, I, 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 I appreciate it. Would it be at the top on my list? Possibly not. But for you, I'm assuming you would still like to own one. Yeah, I think I absolutely would. There is something in the last... Uh, in my, my, I've had a really very heavy involvement with contemporary art, international contemporary art, for the last four or five years. And George Condor is is the the, the singular artist, the, the one that I've come away with, being really enchanted. I think is is mm. the word, just charmed and enthused. And I just find myself seeing images all over the place. And I think the 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 thing for even for people who've never bought art before, there is something in that for them that it's recognizable you can see that yes he he doesn't owe anything to anybody and yes there are influences but he's very singular you look at condo and the rest of the contemporary art world yeah you know it's 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 different in a good way singular and unique and enchanting so yes i would have no hesitation in 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 owning if i could afford a major work in <laughs> owning it but you know there are there are other ways and I, I think it may be this, in some cases, there's a time, isn't there, in, in life mm -hmm. uh, for, for things to happen. And it's George Condo's time, I think, happily. 
fascinating subject. Well, thank you ever so much for, for joining us again, Jonathan. It's, a, it's always a pleasure to have you on and uh, always a pleasure to hear you. Hear your, hear your enthusiasm for, for the art as, uh, as you say it. So thank you very much. So ladies and gentlemen, yeah, thank good. you ever so much. Good, good. So yeah. ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much for, for joining us again. And uh, thank you to Jonathan. And uh, please don't forget next week, um, Rupert Mars will be with us uh, chatting about all things art related, no doubt. And uh, we look forward to seeing you then. So thank you ever so much for joining us. Jonathan, thank you to you again. And we will see okay, you very thank soon. thank you. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye now.